Hello my fiery friends, the Inferno Man here with the hottest in budget deck technology. And for today's deck tech, join me once again as we continue through our Basically series. If you're new to this at all, this is going to be a series of deck techs that I have done that will not cost you a single rare or mythic to put together. That is awesome! That's right. So without further ado, let's go ahead, let's jump into this super awesome and easy to build deck. A deck that I am calling Basically Utate. But before we continue, if you do like any of the content that I do, please like, follow, and subscribe wherever you watch the content. You can support me monthly for a small amount on Patreon, where I have all of my extended bonus footage posted. We also have a Redbubble spot where you can buy merch like stickers and shirts, or for free, all you can just do also is just join our growing community on Discord. Your support helps keep this channel going. All links are in the details below. Longtime viewers of the channel know how we do it. We have to talk about the stats of the deck before we dive right in. So as you can see, our mutate deck today is going to be blue, black, and green. Those are cell type colors, and you're looking at an average mana curve of about 3.4. The deck is only going to require 36 creatures and 24 lands. That was right. No instants, sorceries, artifacts, or enchantments are needed. Basically, mutate is focused around the mutate mechanic that was brought about from Ikoria years ago. All we're simply trying to do is resolve one or two creatures that could either be utilized as removal or as protection for itself, and we keep adding more and more creatures to it to make it bigger, stronger, harder to beat and also keeps getting insane amounts of value with every mutate trigger we can hit. But how can we pull that actually off with a deck that's only just creatures? Good question! Well, I'm glad you asked. So of course, we're going to talk about every single creature card in the deck to explain how the strategy works out. Now I know what you're thinking. For those of you that are new to this mechanic, what is the mutate mechanic and how does it work? Well, you got me. Well, I'm glad you asked. So pulling out a single card right here, let's read what it means to mutate a card. If you cast this card for its mutate cost, you put it under or over target non-human creature you own. They mutate into the creature on top plus all abilities underneath. That's not complicated, am I right? By all accounts, it doesn't make sense. Put it another way, let's say you pull out that Paradise Druid right here. Paradise Druid has Hexproof as long as it's untapped. Now, say we mutate it by putting a Trumpeting Gnar on top of it. What that means is, Trumpeting Gnar is now the main creature on top, but it gets the abilities of Paradise Druid underneath it. So it will be able to have Hexproof as long, of course, as it's untapped, just like the card reads. So as you keep stacking your cards together with Mutate, just be mindful of what you put on top or underneath, because you want to make sure you get the maximum amount of abilities, but also, ideally, with the strongest card, on top. Starting in the one drop slot, we will have Zangoth Mamba here. This is going to be a Nightmare Snake that has a 1-1. One, one. When it mutates, target creature and opponent controls get minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. So this is great in the opening game if we can just start mutating early to then just get rid of small level threats. We also have something here that may look a little strange, but hear me out for a second here. A Boreal Grazer here, a simple little 0-3 Sloth Beast with Reach, and it reads, of course, when it enters, you just get to put an extra land out. What's nice about that, of course, is it could be a tap land as well. It doesn't actually have to be a basic, so that's awesome for us. Going into the 2-drop slot here was where things are going to get more interesting. We have Polywog Symbiote here. It's a Frog 1-3, and each creature spell you cast costs one less to cast if it has Mutate, so this will help us speed up the Mutate mechanic ability, and as long as we keep casting them on creatures that have Mutate, we get to draw a card and discard a card. Of course, the main target you actually want to use Mutate on will be Paradise Druid here. Now, although it is a mana dork, the real reason why you want it is as long as it's untapped, it has Hexproof. So this gives us instant protection to ensure that we can keep mutating it and prevent our opponent from destroying our whole game plan. In the 3 drop slot, you have Trumpeting Gnar here, so this is a beast here that has the 5 mana mutate, and if it does mutate, you get to create a 3-3 green beast creature token, so this will help us go wide as we keep making our creatures bigger and bigger. For the 4 drop slot, we'll have Boneyard Lurker here. It's a Nightmare Beast that's a 4-4, and it has mutate for 4. When this creature mutates, return target permanent card from our graveyard to our hand, so as we say, for example, keep digging through our deck with Polywog Symbiote, say, out with the Boneyard here, this will ensure that we can keep getting those cards that we throw into the graveyard back into our hand. For a ramp, we'll have Migratory Greathorn here. This also has Mutate for 3, and when this creature mutates, you get to search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle, just to help us again keep ramping out quick. Insatiable Hemophage here is going to be also a 4 mana that's a 3-3 three, three and a Nightmare with Mutate for 3. It also has Death Touch. However, when this creature mutates, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. So this can help us again clean out the game very quickly, as long as we can just keep mutating over and over again. In the 5 drop slot here, Dreamtail Heron here is our elemental bird. It has Mutate for 4. It's a flyer that's a 3-4 that reads, when it mutates, you just draw a card. Simple, clean, and easy. 
Ostracist Sterix here is a 5 mana 6-6, six, six, but you mutate it for 6. This Elk Beach just says, whenever we mutate it, you exile cards from the top of your library until you cast X amount of permanent cards, where X is the number of times this creature is mutated, and you get to put all those permanents onto the battlefield. This, of course, will be one of your best finishers with the deck, because if we keep mutating with it, you'll get a ton of extra value and can just keep throwing out more and more of your deck onto the battlefield very quickly. In the 6-drop slot here, we'll have Chittering Harvester here. It has Mutate for 5, and it's a 4-6 Nightmare that reads, when this card mutates, each opponent has to sacrifice a creature. This will help us, of course, just keep the battlefield clear of anything that we may have trouble just fighting. And then finally, in the 7-drop slot here, Archipelago Gore here is a 7-7 seven, seven Leviathan. It has Mutate of 6. When this creature mutates, you tap up to X target creatures, where X is the number of times this creature has mutated. Those cards don't untap during their next controller's untap step. So this also could be a great finisher for us to just tap down our opponent's board and just force through the remaining points of damage. Of course, this is a budget deck, so we're going to keep it as simple as possible for the land base. Five islands, six swamps, seven forests, and a single copy of Scoured Springs, Festering Gulch, and Lust Oasis here. It may look a little strange to only have single copies of these dual lands here, but the reason why, of course, is we have the Migratory Great Horn here, just to ensure that we can keep digging out more lands, so this is why we want to keep it at this kind of game plan. However, we do also have a Tri-Land here, we have Opulent Palace here, just to give us a little bit more value, because again, this will fix our mana perfectly, even though it comes into play tapped. Now, if you are interested in taking this into Best of 3, here's again what you're going to be using for the sideboard. You have a single copy of Soul Guide Lantern here as your graveyard hate, but we do have a little bit extra graveyard hate, which I'll explain in just a moment. Essence Symbiote here can be replacing the Arboreal Grazer here from the sideboard if you just need something to go bigger with the plus one plus one counter ability, and also it can give you some life gain. Pouncing Shore Shark here is our only flash mutate creature here, but if you do want to use this, you can bring it in just to use it for more tempo of plays against your opponent's creatures. And then we also have another option here for mutating, switching out Cavern Whisperer here. So this Nightmare here is actually pretty sweet. You can mutate it for four, and it has Menace. And if it does mutate, you get to forcefully make your opponent discard a card. Since we do have a lot of creatures in the deck that have a high level of power, Stubborn Denial is going to be our best option here for a counter spell. Because again, with the Ferocious ability, you can just counter it straight out for only one mana, because you'll have a lot of creatures with a power of four or greater in the main deck. If you do want to go with Cavern Whisperer here, and maybe you do want to focus on more of a game plan that focuses on discarding cards, you have copies of Duress here, just again to pluck away cards from our opponent's hand. And then finally, as our catch all ability here for Artifact and Enchantment Hate, and also to exile a card from the graveyard in a pinch, you'll have copies of Return to Nature. Now as far as strategy for the deck is concerned, the biggest advantage, as you already saw when we explained the deck, is we're all in on creatures. So if your opponent is trying to maybe discard cards with duresses or any cards that just affect artifacts, enchantments, planeswalkers, instant sorceries, they're going to have a lot of cards in their hand that won't really do much of anything because all we're just trying to do is just get a single target down, whether it's the Grazer, your Mamba, the Polywog Symbiote, or the Paradise Druid. Ideally, it should be the Druid because with the Hexproof ability it has, as long as you don't tap with it, will ensure that you can keep adding more and more creatures to it to make it bigger and give you extra value. Cards such as your Trumpeting Nar, as I mentioned earlier, will help you go wide with more beast tokens. Your Auspacious Sterix here in the mid to late game will help you then get more cards out onto the battlefield from your library. Cards such as your Chittering Harvester will then take off certain creatures that maybe you have a hard time dealing with. And even if you don't swing at all, you have backup options such as Insatiable Hemophage, as I mentioned, to help life gain and drain out to get to your victory. Having said that, that is of course going to exemplify the biggest weakness to the deck. Since we're all in on creatures, if your opponent has Wrath, if your opponent has a lot of spot removal before we can start mutating onto, say, like your Paradise Druid, your deck is going to have a bad time. And that's also the reason why it's important for you to have at least one or two key cards that you can still mutate back and forth with if it comes down to it. Once your opponent figures out your game plan, they're definitely going to start bringing in a lot more of the removal to stop your game plan. Having said that, if you do go into best of three with this, that's where, of course, the sideboard helps you shine a lot. Cards like your Duress or your Cavern Whisper will then discard cards from your opponent's hand to make sure that your game plan can go off. Your Stubborn Denials, you'll want to save those as best as you can until you know for sure that you can counter a spell very easily with the max amount of value. And if you do have ways of then stabilizing, one interesting note to make of the deck that I actually kind of want to say is not necessarily a weakness, but something to keep an eye on is as you keep getting more and more value with cards such as your Auspacious Sterics or even your Dream 
Dream Tail Heron, just be mindful you might end up decking yourself out because as you keep getting more and more cards out with the extra mutating triggers that go off, it'll start amplifying it faster and faster. So you wanna make sure that if you're gonna be now at the at least halfway through your deck, definitely you should be able to beat your opponent down before you deck yourself out. Now, if you do like the deck and you do wanna to try to take it to the next level or at least try to play something similar in its style, as always, I will leave a couple of extra links if you haven't already seen throughout this video. And as you can see on screen right now, there are a couple of other variants or at least some decks that are similar to this that you can also play if you do wanna add in some rares or mythics. But with that all out of the way, here are my final thoughts and I now wanna give you on this deck. When it comes to all the basic league decks we've done, this one definitely was a little bit more of a challenge, although it may look very limited here, it actually has a couple of different ways of getting to its victory depending on what your opponent is playing. To put it in another way, if you are a fan of the mutate mechanic, if you're a fan of mid-range decks, and if you're a fan of going all in on a single strategy to then just beat down your opponent while still having a diversity of strategies to get to your victory, by all means, give this deck a try. And I assure you, when you manage to mutate a ton of cards all together to make one super powerful creature that'll give you a ton of value across the board, you're going to have a lot of fun doing so. You'll be very surprised at how it pulls it off, and you will definitely not be disappointed. That's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching everyone, and just remember that no matter what you do play in the game of life, always be sure to burn bright. Later!